Hi there. Welcome to episode 11 of the Waveback Music Podcast. Today's game is Metal Gear for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Enjoy! Hello again, this is the Wave Back Music Podcast, a show where we listen to and reminisce about some of the best video game music there is. My name is Chris, and I am your host. It's Metal Gear Month here at Geekade.com because we're all excited about the release of Metal Gear Solid 5 for the PlayStation 4. And since we are, I've decided to spend some time with the classic that started it all, Solid Snake's very first adventure here in the U.S. I am talking about Metal Gear. Metal Gear was originally released in 1987 for the MSX2 computer in Japan. Because of its success, Konami decided to port the stealth action game to the most popular console in the world at the time, the Famicom slash Nintendo Entertainment System. This was done without the game's creator's involvement, though, so things were definitely a little off, especially the US version and its notoriously, hilariously bad translation. Still, the game went on to be one of the most beloved NES games of its time, and spawned a multitude of sequels over the years, making the original Metal Gear, with all of its flaws, as legendary as Solid Snake himself. But this show is about the music. Specifically, tonight, we're talking about the NES version, which had some different music than its original MSX2 counterpart. This was done by design, though, as the programmers were apparently told to make sure that the Famicom slash NES version had as, was as different from the MSX2 version as possible, likely in an attempt to get players that had already played the game on the MSX2 to give this new version a try as well. The music was composed by Kazuki Moraoka? who hasn't had the most prominent career, but has still been responsible for some great tunes. He's worked on the music for Top Gun for the NES, uh, the arcade version of Contra, and many later Metal Gear games, including the original PlayStation masterpiece, Metal Gear Solid. The music we'll be listening to tonight is absolutely brilliant. Classic NES-era Konami through and through. We start tonight with the opening music, since Metal Gear's title screen didn't feature any music at all. The first song you hear in the game is after pressing Start, is uh, the track that we're about to listen to, which is uh, where it has the game's main character, Solid Snake, being dropped out of a plane into the jungle, with a couple other people also being dropped into the jungle, who you never hear about or from again in the history of the series. Kind of weird. Um, but yeah, you're about to start your mission. You're on a plane, and you parachute out into the middle of the jungle, and this really cool-looking NES-style cinematic of your plane flying over the uh, jungle and getting dropped out... Uh, it just plays before you start the game with its awful, awful bad translation. So, here is track number one, opening. Nice little invigorating number to get the game started off. Uh, so, here we are. We're in the jungle. You, 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 the you very, very, very start of the game. You start at like the end of this path, and there's jungle everywhere, and the ground is, it's, it's clearly night. Although when you parachute down, it was evening, but the game appeared really just, it just looks like it's nighttime outside, uh, especially because the guards feel asleep. And I didn't say that wrong. That's how it's said in the game. So you're, you're walking around through, uh, through, through the jungle, and this music is just, oh, it's perfect because. So Metal Gear is so different from other NES games because it's stealth-based. Most NES games, your natural instinct is to just go and attack things. But Metal Gear, you walk up to the guard uh, who is who feels asleep. Um, if you walk past him before he feels asleep, he'll you know come after you if he sees you. So it's the game's way of teaching you that, wait a minute, I can get by this guy without getting shot or attacked or anything if I'm sneaky. And that's where the whole uh, stealth thing comes into play. And this song is, uh, like, at least for me and for a lot of uh, American Metal Gear players, where this was where it started, this is the first song you ever heard that was the backdrop for stealth gameplay. And it's fantastic. It is a fantastic, fantastic song. Probably one of my favorite in the game. Probably my favorite in the game. It's just so darn good. So here is track number two, Jungle.
love the the drums in this track. The very military sounding drums. It's 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 so cool. Now a lot of this game is played in the jungle in this little outside area with this music, but the majority of the game is played inside the base outer heaven. So, if you've played Metal Gear Solid, you know all about Outer Heaven. This is the legendary mission that gets referenced all the time throughout the Metal Gear series. This is the game where Big Boss betrays Solid Snake, and it's just ridiculous. <laughs> the the storyline in Metal Gear is so absurd, I'm not even going to sniff getting into it here. We've talked about it a lot on the Stone Age Gamer. If you really want to hear our analysis of the pure craziness that is the Metal Gear storyline. You can just, just head over there or Wikipedia it or play the games because they're really, really good. Um, but anyway, the bulk of this game is played inside of a secret military base called Outer Heaven. Outer Heaven is just crawling with guards and traps and pitfalls and uh, you're always trying to rescue people and find items and get key cards and remote control rockets and uh, apparently train killer scorpions. Uh, long story. Um, but the music in here takes that whole stealth feeling just a little bit, a little step further, because, man, this music is so, like, movie-style stealthy. It's just, this movie, this, this movie, this music makes you want to sneak around, and it's flawless. It is just the most flawless piece of music that they could have possibly composed for this area of, for this part of the game. And it's so good to listen to. It's, oh, it's, oh, fantastic. I'm going to stop gushing about it. Here's track number three, Outer Heaven. busy the bass is in this song. Just it's it's all over the place, yet it maintains this very kind of chill yet high octane vibe that's going on for the, the the stealth elements, but the really the bass, like if you weren't paying attention to it this time, just rewind a bit and really listen to just how all over the place the bass track is. It's so, so good. Now the next track we're going to listen to is all about alert. Uh, and that's what the track's called, Alert. Um, so, as in Metal Gear games, uh, you're, you're trying to sneak past things, but you're not always going to go through undetected. Somebody's going to spot you sooner or later. And you're going to hear at the very beginning of this track that little exclamation point that goes over the character's heads and that sound that accompanies it, it goes all the way back to the beginning. That's always been a part of Metal Gear. And I remember when playing the original Metal Gear Solid, seeing that exclamation point and that similar sound playing uh, Metal Gear Solid, just just being all completely over the moon for it, because I thought it was so cool that it had that, that tie back to the classic image of something being alerted to your presence and an exclamation point appearing over their head. Um, and then this other song that's going to play after it, uh, it's not a song that you probably, if you've played through Metal Gear, it's a, there's a chance you haven't really listened to this entire track, because... 
when you get caught, when you get if something is alerted to your presence, you really don't want to stick around long enough to listen to the music. Like you want to try to get out of that danger as quickly as humanly possible. So listening to the majority of this track and how good it is 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 really kind of a fun treat to listen to without the added stress of guards jumping out at you and trying to kill you. Um, so here is the special treat that is track number four, Alert. that's track number four that is alert from metal gear for nes and boy is that an aptly titled song again i'm not entirely sure that that's what it's called uh whenever i download these tracks that's what they've been called and they just kind of correspond with whatever's happening in the game but it's, it's such a a high energy track and it's using that that instrument set that konami tend to use now Granted, the NES had a sound chip, and there were things you could do it with it and things you couldn't do, but there's something about Konami composition, and I'm pretty sure we've talked about it either here on the show or on Stone Age Gamer before, but there's just a very specific... We did, in the Stinger episode, that, that very specific Konami style of composition, and um, and man, this one's just... It's so high energy, and it's so terrifying. It's like... It it just it's 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 a very stressful song in, in exactly the way it's supposed to be. It's it's so much fun, uh, and it's really cool to listen to the whole thing because again, you know, you get caught by the alert. You're just like, oh, I gotta get to another room quick as possible. And hearing that there is a you know a full on track there and and a very well composed track is is pretty exciting. But we're gonna slow things down just a little bit. Uh, our next track, um, we're gonna kind of take you a little bit out of things. Um, the next track is going to be what happens if you don't succeed in getting away from everybody. Uh, if you get shot to death, you get the game over screen. And there, there's always continues, and, and, and they give you passwords so you can pick up and play later. Uh, but this is it's a really cool game over tune, because it's... Uh, it does what one of these game over slash continue screen things should do, is make you feel defeated yet also invigorated enough to pick that controller up and keep on going like the mission's not over yet now i'm i'm gonna I'm keep going i'm gonna kick these guys asses and i'm gonna do this right because i'm solid snake uh so here is track number five the game over music <laughs> So let's say uh, you got to that game over screen, and you just don't have time to play any longer. It's just like, you know what? I need a break from this. I keep getting caught. Those cameras, they're hard, they're hard to get past. I fell into a hole, because, boy, those happen a lot. Trap holes in the floor, they're ridiculous. They just kind of just open up right underneath you. So if you're just cruising along, like, like you know, not a care in the world, like you feeling like you're home free, the floor's going to fall out from under you, so be careful. But you have the option of getting passwords. Um, so this had one of those old-school pain-in-the-butt password systems where you had to write down all these different characters in order to enter them in later and pick up where you left off. But it was better than nothing. It was better than starting from the beginning every time. Um, and the password music is very... This is another thing that Konami did did very well, is, is kind of eerie music. Um, and I don't know... I, I certainly don't think that was the intent of this song, to, to have it be very eerie, but there's just this... 
this kind of lonely eeriness to this track that I, I can't describe. A lot of this similar kind of uh, music was in Goonies 2. Like, there's there's a couple of, like, really, really gloomy, eerie songs in Goonies 2, another Konami game. These folks were really good at this kind of stuff. But anyway, here is track number six, Password. odd eerie track like just ooh, kind of unsettling but good well well composed wonderful song but ooh, the game so well that that track's always giving me the willies a tad but anyways uh so moving on back to the game we're we're, we're back in the thick of things uh and it's time to approach a boss battle of which this game has several and they're all uh absurd characters just like metal gear solid and whatnot they're just these like crazy themed characters with you know, weird weapons, and you, you blow them up, you shoot them a whole bunch of times. They're a little bit more traditional, not as a... It was an NES game, and uh, <laughs> it, wasn't, it, it wasn't as lovingly crafted as Metal Gear Solid, let's put it that way, but uh, the boss battles were pretty cool, and the music that uh, accompanied them was pretty neat. So, here is track number seven, Boss Battle. Again, much like the alert track, this is uh, its very invigorating. It's very high energy, because it's a boss battle. You want it to be high energy. You want it to feel like this confrontation is dangerous. You want it to, to feel like you're in danger. And uh, this game could be tough uh, from time to time. So this was this was very fitting music for the boss battles. I thought it was very, very good. Um, but it's not the only kind of boss battle in the game. Uh, there was a final boss... And this is probably the the biggest, most disappointing difference between the NES Metal Gear Solid, uh, sorry, the NES Metal Gear and the original MSX2 Metal Gear. In the original game, the last boss is, as you would figure, Metal Gear. In this game, uh, the last boss was a supercomputer. Yeah, so you don't actually fight Metal Gear in Metal Gear for NES because of reasons. I don't know, could have been limitations on the hardware... I'm sure some of the talented folks at Konami could have figured it out if they really wanted to. But instead, you walk into a room, four regular guards rush you, who you can just one-shot kill, and then you there's a big supercomputer. And you lay a bunch of plastic explosive down, and then it blows up. And that's pretty much it. So, uh, this is kind of interesting, because it is a really not stressful situation. It's actually very, very boring. Uh, this quote-unquote, last boss. Uh, granted, there was some cool stuff happening in the next room, but you didn't know that at the time. This was, uh, this was a very strange situation to be in. Um, because the music is very high energy. Again, it's like, it's like super boss battle time. It's like, oh my god, it's, it's uh, the next level. It's a computer, and it's not fighting back. I can't possibly lose here. Um, I don't know, it's weird, but it's a good track. So here is track number eight, Supercomputer.
Now, once you blow up the old supercomputer, um, you move on to a self-destruct sequence, which is very Metroid-esque. Uh, the timer starts counting down, it's time for you to get out of outer heaven before uh, things blow up. But before you can, you move into the next room, and who is there but Big Boss? The person that has been talking to you on your transceiver the entire time. The one in charge of your mission, the one who got you there was actually a bad guy the whole time. He was in charge of Outer Heaven. He was trying to hijack Metal Gear or blah, 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 blah. It was absolute Metal Gear insanity, and this was its inception. This is where it came from. This is the first time that we were exposed to it, and it was a, it was a pretty cool reveal because, you know, throughout the entire course of this game, you keep getting calls on your transceiver, which if you've played modern, modern Metal Gear games, you know these as the, the codex screens. Um, but in this one, it was like a trans, a radio transceiver, because it was the 90s. No, I'm sorry, the 80s. Nobody really thought of Kodak at that point. But the, the conversations, while incredibly poorly translated, were, uh, were pretty cool. The story was really interesting, and you had these characters helping you throughout the entire course of the game. And Big Boss was the one. This was the guy that you were trusting, and it turned out the whole time he was playing you. And now you have to fight him. And dude can take a surprising number of uh, rocket launcher blasts to the face uh, before dying, which is pretty weird, but very Nintendo game-ish. Um, so this uh, music that starts when the self-destruct sequence starts is the music that plays during the big boss boss battle. The big, big boss boss battle. I love that statement. And uh, it's pretty cool. It's good It's it's good music. It's... Um, it, it's you know, it's escape music. It's there's a timer going off, so this is easily the most intense boss battle of the entire game, uh, because all the rest of them, you, you just you know, as long as you can live, you can keep fighting them as long as you can uh, to beat them. This one, we got to take down Big Boss and get out of here before the uh, the whole thing blows up. So that's that. Uh, so here is track number nine, self destruct. High energy track, um, and now we're moving on to the last track of the night. Uh, track number ten is going to be the ending. And this is the the very end of the game. You've defeated Big Boss. You've taken down Outer Heaven. You've succeeded in your mission in every way possible, and you get your little ending sequence. But more interesting than anything is your transceiver starts talking to you and says, "This is your computer speaking. Here are the creators of your Metal Gear game." And then it runs the credits. So the game actually breaks the fourth wall and starts giving you the credits of the Metal Gear game. It's really weird, um, but it's uh, it's <laughs> it's it, you know it's pure Metal Gear. You know when when Metal Gear Solid Two happened and the game started breaking that fourth wall and and messing with you, that wasn't the first time. This series has always been that strange. Um, but this is a this is a cool track. It's you know very classic NES ending music kind of stuff. Uh, so here it is, track number ten, ending.
So yeah, um, that's one of the cool things about NES ending tracks is that uh, they they tend to be more dynamic than a lot of the music that are in the games because they're they're finite. You know, they have a beginning, middle, and end. Granted, this game's ending loops. Uh, it doesn't have that finite ending, but a lot of NES games of the era do. And and even still, you can hear uh, just the different way that this song was written than uh, other songs in the game. And this one's cool because it starts off kind of slow and then it picks up and and kind of. It's nice to hear this kind of music coming out of an NES because, uh, you know, there was so much that could be done with NES music or, or retro game music in general, and a lot. Of, but most of the times they had to be written in a way that, you know, because the player is in control, you can't really match the things that are happening on the screen because if if you're moving around from from point to point, you can't have those like those crescendos when some particular piece of action happens unless it's scripted because there's no telling that the person is going to be playing the game at the same pace as the music. So when those kinds of those composers got the opportunity to create music that, you know, corresponded with visuals on the screen that were entirely scripted or over a credit sequence or an opening, those songs are are always some of the most interesting to me because they stand out. They're they're put together differently than background music is, and and they're extremely cool. And this is a this is a great ending tune. Uh, the Konami folks, especially uh, for this game, Mr. Muraoka, boy, I hope I'm saying that right, uh, did a wonderful, wonderful job. Uh, and Metal Gear is a fantastic game. There's a reason this is a legend, and the music is definitely a part of it. And that's our show. Tune in next time and we'll spend some time listening to the incredibly wonderful, wonderful music of Bit Trip Saga, uh, or Bit Trip Complete for either the Wii or the 3DS. Um, these games are extraordinary, um, and the music is really, really, really a special treat. So I'll be playing a selection from um, the games in this collection, uh, and it'll be pretty wonderful. As always, I'd love to hear everyone's thoughts and memories from uh, from this game or the game we'll be talking about next week. So if you like, you can send them to mail at geekade.com. I will fill you in on all the details as soon as we can through our regular social media channels, which you should totally follow slash like slash subscribe to if you haven't already. And while you're at it, check out the other great content we have here on our site at geekade.com. Thanks again for listening, and good night. <laughs>